In philosopher Peter Singer's article, The Life You Can Save, he discusses his belief regarding the topic of global poverty. His main argument is that if it is within an individual's power to prevent something bad from happening without sacrificing anything near as important, then it is wrong for an individual not to do so. One of the examples he uses in his article to help support his argument is regarding a drowning child. Imagine that one day, walking to work, you see a child drowning in a pond in the near distance. You become overwhelmed with two choices. You could just ignore the child and continue on your way, or you could save the child. However, if you save the child, you will in turn ruin the expensive suit you are wearing, be late to work, and potentially lose your job. Most people agree that we should save the drowning child, but at the same time, many of those people do not give to charities to aid those in need around the world. There are more than 3 billion people living in poverty. Is there truly a difference between the drowning child and anyone else dying from lack of food, shelter, and medicine? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, the Singer article, as I recall, one of the main parts of it is he wishes to attack this standard distinction that we have between acts that we think we are obliged to do and then what are traditionally categorized as acts of charity. And the um, argument that he presents is that this division is unhelpful at best because it's not the case that those in Africa and other countries are less deserving of our actions. Rather, we are obliged to help them. When we look at um, world poverty and crime and uh, abuse and all of the injustices that are in the world, um, that's somebody else's problem. That's some other country's problem. That's some other person's problem. And we often we often kind of just say there's agencies for that. That's what welfare's for. That's what that's what services are for. That's what you know our country is over there taking care of for. You know, it's not my job to fix everybody else's problem. If they had an opportunity to to see the individuals and what they're going through, so if they um, by words they they understand, oh, this is that, and uh, maybe somebody else might help. Um, but I think if they saw the individual uh, in, the, in their state of need, um, or if they knew somebody that was personally going through that, I think they would uh, more than willingly uh, give to help those individuals. Singer believes that we are morally obligated to give every bit we are capable of. But how do we determine just how much every individual is responsible to give? I think there, there is a priority of life that people need to establish for themselves. You know, obviously we live not only in an affluent country, but we live in an affluent part of the country. The Midwest, the heartland, has a history not only of surviving many economic issues, but also has a history of having a heart for their neighbors. Almost 100 years ago when Billy Shelper opened Home Sweet Home Ministries, he had a very simple solution to the problem that he saw. And that was to gather a group of neighbors together, people within the community, to make an impact in the lives of those around them. While global issues of social justice, hunger, poverty are very important, no one should go hungry. No one should live in an environment in which they cannot be provided the opportunity to succeed to the greatest extent they possibly can. But there needs to be a balance, a balance looking at global issues, as well as a balance looking at local issues. It's not about the amount of money, it's about the intent. It's about the passion. It's about people's resolve to understand that if we as the community come together, imagine what great impact we can have on the issues of homelessness, poverty, and hunger. It only takes a little bit from each individual and all individuals coming together to make that kind of impact. I think the degree of giving is up to the individual. I don't think we're morally responsible to give everything we have to um, give away all those things that we want uh, to give to those in need. I think that would be um, detrimental to some degree to the people in need. 
So the fact that there are some people in, in circles um, closer to me doesn't mean that um, I'm not, in fact, underestimating the moral obligation I have to um, the, the, those starving strangers around the world. And um, it's one thing to say that each person, um, uh, my, my obligations to each person isn't identical. Um, it's, uh, even if I'm right, that's, it's the case that I have more obligations to some people than others. It doesn't at all follow that I'm not being incredibly selfish and, and, and avoiding actual moral obligations that I have by not making more sacrifices to those people in the outer circles as compared to the inner circles. If Singer's belief came true and everyone donated every bit they could, whether through free will or a change in our legal system, what kind of impact would that have on our society? We wouldn't necessarily just lose all of our productivity and our potential, um, but productivity would definitely shift and it would probably shift towards goods um, that benefit society um, on a whole rather than benefiting the individual. I don't know, but I would suspect it would be catastrophic if you simply transferred all the wealth in the developed world to the developing world so that they were equal. I mean, I don't think you can, I think it would have a profound negative economic effect in the short term. I think financial resources is only one issue when it comes to eliminating poverty and hunger and homelessness in our community, it's easy for people to write a check that helps them to disconnect emotionally and intellectually from the problem. I think at Home Sweet Home Industries, what we really want to incorporate as well as a financial resource component is for people to truly understand and advocate with their neighbors, with their sphere of influence on these kinds of issues. There needs to be not only a financial will, but a social, political, educational and community will to change these kinds of issues, to really impact social justice. Someone once said to me that we don't think in our community that we will ever eliminate issues of poverty and homelessness. And that's the kind of attitude that we need to change. Money in and of itself will not change an attitude. It's about changing a focus. It's about changing an understanding that A, a problem exists, and B, we as a community not only are morally obligated, spiritually obligated to have an impact, but that we must, as individuals, come together and having that whole being greater than the sum of the parts, work towards eliminating these types of circumstances in the lives of people who are neighbors. Peter Singer cares about the cause for aiding those in poverty. However, his argument is not valid. The changes needed for our society to donate everything other than what is needed for our basic survival is not realistic. The benefit given to the individuals living in poverty would only be temporary because they would become dependent on our charity and our society would fall. Global poverty is a severe issue in our world that needs attention, but Peter Singer's argument is not the way to fix the issue.